second day of spring. Unbelievable. <laughs> depth review you get a close-up of this burger that black bean patty's got like bell peppers um, there's corn obviously black beans looks like there's a rice base to it too and I just learned that it's a real Pittsburgh thing to put fries slaw on your sandwich and I feel like that's a part of everything here that's what that's what Christine tells me um, so 10 out of 10 shout out to my buddy Andrew amazing stuff Pittsburgh style. I want you dance naked. So I can see you. Good job, Mel again. I'd like to get to know you. You don't have to acknowledge it. Anyways, uh, welcome to the Lewis Switcher Show, everybody. A lot of randomness again. I think that's going to be the theme of this season. Overexposure, random talks. Um, we showed you some Permani Brothers down in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Market Square area. Delicious uh, southwestern black bean burger that I tried. Slaw and fries on the sandwich, Pittsburgh style. Uh, now uh, we're gonna take a look at some some uh, some movie selections uh, in the Pittsburgh area. I'm hoping to find something cool. Me and Christine both are going to pick out a random title. Um, hopefully we can find something cool, kind of wacky. And then there's a couple brief movie reviews, stuff that we've watched, and we're gonna discuss together. It's uh, be our first film discussion together. Um, so stick around for that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love all you guys, thank you guys. I'm up to 70 subscribers now. That's the highest subscriber count that I've had, and uh, it's really awesome, you know? Even if it was uh, 10 or five or two, it's just, um, it's not about the quantity. And it's like that with stuff that I purchase and stuff too, and it's about that you know, about the people who I surround myself in my life, too. It's, uh, you'd rather have, uh, you know, a few good ones than a lot of shitty ones, I guess. Um, but yeah, set the road, guys. Spin round, round, and round. See my love for sorrow, cause I have given you my own. Little four tops. Whoa! There we are place over here called the exchange I see a lot of these in other parts of the country uh, we don't have these in, in Detroit at all um, so I'm gonna check it out Stay tuned. Show you what we got. All right, so on to these pickups that uh, I scored, uh, and we'll do some brief movie reviews. I am joined uh, by my girlfriend Christine. Say hi, Christine. Hi. Um, she will be joining me uh, for the majority of this season. Um, so yeah, uh, new season, uh, first pickup video in so long. It's been forever, right? Yeah. It's been. I don't. I don't do these too often. Um, but we're, we'll start with actually some of the stuff that we've watched uh, together and um, 
I want to start with something that's been featured on my show um, several times. I think probably in like two or three episodes. But I've mentioned I have one favorite film of all time. 1990 production date. Daniel Stern, Ari Gross, Patrick Dempsey, Alan Arkin. Phenomenal film called Coupe de Ville. One of my subscribers, Mr. Greg Garwood. Thank you so much, man, for seeking this out. Um, watching it under my recommendation. Um, posting it about it on Facebook. Awesome, dude. I'm glad you... Li- I hope, hope you really did like it. Um, but, Christine, um, you watched this for the first time. Can you maybe share a couple of little brief thoughts about it? I don't know. I mean... It was, it was not what I was expecting at all. I mean, I don't know what I was expecting, actually. It was, like, it was wholesome, I will say. Um, I, I don't know, it was, like, a timeless, like... <laughs> hey, miss. <laughs> Someone is enjoying this. I, I would definitely I, agree. I, I don't even know how to describe it, but, I mean, it's something that, like, as soon as we finished, like, the DVD started playing again, and I was, like, totally ready to just watch it through again a second time. Like, it was just, like feel-good, like, family-friendly movie. I would agree with that. It was touching. It was heartwarming. How does that soundtrack? Soundtrack was pretty spot on. Yeah. Uh, I have the soundtrack on vinyl. Um, But yeah, I just wanted to to mention it because Christine was so nice enough to... Hey, miss. There she is. Um, So nice enough to check it out. I always love when, you know... I was going to check it out Either way, because it was, you know, I mean, Lewis Switcher talked about it on his show uh, multiple times. Very highly recommended. Yeah, it's one of those that she mentioned the word timeless. I think that absolutely this movie is, um, you know, filmed in 1990, and um, obviously the country and pop culture itself was much different back then. Um, but as far as being relevant today, it's, I think, I think even like younger generations would be able to kind of connect with this film especially if you have siblings you know brothers and but check it out amazing moving on um christine uh wanted to check this one out gentleman bronco i've never seen it um from the creators of napoleon dynamite um i haven't seen napoleon dynamite in a really long time but i remember when i did watch it super wacky just ridiculous slapstick off the wall stuff um my impressions of this going in was um, the people who did create Napoleon Dynamite, if they were backing this film and creating this film and a part of it, I knew going in it was going to be pretty nuts. Yeah. Um, Character-wise, um, just really, really over-the-top, ridiculous. Um, specifically, I had mentioned after it, the one scene... I don't, I don't usually generally do spoilers or anything like that, but <clears throat> there was one scene where this character, like, was making this sound... And I don't know that 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 sound like, ooh. <laughs> I don't know. You the cat. <laughs> Did I really? Where are you going, miss? Um, but I don't know. I liked it. I laughed several times. Um, it's got the same awkward humor as like Napoleon Dynamite. It's very like it's just completely awkward. Like um, Jermaine from uh, Flight of the Concords is in. He's one of the main dudes pretty cool 2009 um i don't know really really recommend it um inspired me to definitely put napoleon dynamite on a watch list um that we're currently compiling right now um okay we're gonna we're gonna move on to um, another one that she had uh, recommended me to check out um one of like her picks as far as what we've been watching recently that film is called wrist cutters Christine, will you, will you actually take the reins here and tell me, like, how you discovered this or when, uh, what your impression was when you first how saw I it? I discovered or? it. I think it was one of the, uh, back in the days of, uh, you know, the disc Netflix. It, it was, like, something that was, like, suggested to me when I was watching a bunch of weird, like, artsy movies and stuff. And uh, so I was like, it's called Wrist Cutters, a love story. So, um, I don't know, I just checked it out and I was like, I'm like, it's really, like... It's pretty deep. I would say. I mean, like, you go into it, and it's just, like, it, it, I don't know, like, at first it's, like, it's got a really weird premise to it. I mean, what what did you think, your first watch? Um, I didn't know what to expect, because I, I am a sucker for, um, you know, like, Entertainment Weekly on the cover says a, a deadpan delight, 
Um, Larry Carroll from MTV News says the next cult classic. Another review says a razor sharp comedy. So I kind of like to look at that stuff and, and, and maybe get a feel for what other people's impressions of the film was. I don't let that influence my my way of viewing it in my own sense as well. But like when I saw it, I don't know, looking at the back cover art, Christina always tells me not to read the synopsis. Because she said it's like, you're going to spoil it, no spoilers. It's got to go in. And I don't know. So I totally read it. I read the synopsis and I was like, okay, it sounds like a pretty complicated, twisted love story. But um, this back review, I think, really does like kind of, I, I totally agree. It says a real gem. I hope people check it out. And uh, I'm really, really glad that I did check it out. I'm not, I guess, one to really seek out a love story. Um, but I don't know. The film kind of uh, depicts this. Um, this universe uh, without spoiling too much of people who actually do commit suicide and they live in this kind of alternate universe and um, I don't know I thought the idea and the way the atmosphere was set for this flick was I don't know it was really different you know would you agree that it was pretty different I've never seen a flick that created such a a weirdly beautiful alternate universe I guess I don't yeah, know I mean, there's just like so many details to like weird little things they choose to do with with that like different like universe of these people that all commit suicide it's weird because like i don't i guess it's like they it's like a certain type of people that like are committing suicide and going there but it's like i, I don't know I mean, just... I definitely you know i went and saw it like in some weird um like film thing they did in Pittsburgh it was like a, a black comedy they described it as and I mean I guess in a way it is I'd say there were elements um but for me like in films like Coupe de Ville the ending and stuff like that I think is something as important in these type of films because it deals with kind of a deeper um nature to it or a deeper like meaning um as far as like I feel like uh, endings towards those type of pictures are very important. And like the ending to this movie was what made me really like it so much more. Yeah. I mean, the con the content throughout the entire length of the picture is entertaining, keeps you invested, and you start to really kind of, I guess, care about the characters in the film. But the ending for me is what really did it for me. So check it out. Wrist Cutters. Awesome flick. Um, okay. Lastly, um, what we've been recently watching... Um, we're not including everything uh, due to time. We're already at eight minutes on this clip, so we're going to speed this up. Um, okay, so last thing we watched, um, the sequel was just released uh, a few weeks ago, um, but we watched The Strangers. Um, Christine's never seen it. I've seen it several times. Saw it opening weekend when it was released. Um, I don't want to search too long for the year, but I know it was like um, probably more than a decade ago. Uh, not finding a date, but Liv Tyler, Scott Speedman. Christine's going to take it from here because she's never seen it, and I'll give my brief thoughts afterwards. Yeah, I mean, I you didn't tell me anything about it, really, going into it, which is, like, my favorite. And, uh, like, it was just... It, it was kind of, like, slow-paced, but it wasn't, like... I mean, it definitely keeps your attention the entire time. Like, it wasn't, like... It was, like slow but it was like really it had like a really good atmosphere to it um and it had just like a really weird feeling to it like would you would you agree with that this film felt pretty pretty realistic like yeah it definitely did the atmosphere was, and the environment they created felt pretty real like it yeah could... nothing felt like really like forced like um like whenever we were learning about the the two main characters in it um it was it was like whenever you were like learning about the, the whole situation, like the backstory. It wasn't like it was like forced, like, like it wasn't like there wasn't, shoved down your throat. Yeah, and it wasn't it was like just information overload. Really naturally like, like exposed. It was really cool. I don't think I can't think of too many movies that like do that as well as this did. I'd say as far as it being terrifying, would you agree with it? Like that there are elements of like very very like genuine feelings of. It's definitely spooky. Yeah. Creepy. Simplistic. Because it is so realistic. It's something, you know, it's something that could happen. Yeah, for sure. 
Anybody seen the sequel out there? Um, thoughts about it? I want to see it. Haven't seen it yet. Probably going to wait till Blu-ray or, or DVD. Um, we'll see. But thoughts on The Strangers? Love this one. I thought um, so good. Just always can watch this over and over. Hold on. Uh, what I picked up, um, we're just going to go through them real quick. I don't want this episode to run too long. Um, so first pickup uh, that we found at a disc replay show. Showed you a small clip. Disc replay? What? What am I talking about? What the heck? Where are you? I don't know. I feel like I'm, I don't know. I'm, the exchange. The exchange. I'm not used to saying that because they are not available in the state of Michigan and I'm not in the state of Michigan right now. Um, but yeah, first one we found is... The Backlot Murders. Yeah, Corey Haim. We all know how Lewis Switcher loves Corey Haim and Corey Feldman, so... Um, didn't didn't have this. Corey Haim's featured in this. Had to have it. Um, I don't know. It's, it's super silly. Really silly, actually, but Corey Haim, Backlot Murders. Um, next up is, I think we found this at the exchange as well. And I remember entering the exchange, I had mentioned that we were in there trying to find something really weird. We found it. <laughs> I think Kitty, we... Kitty Killers. Yeah, so, I don't know, the title alone. You know, we were, um... I don't know, just browsing like the cheap stuff, and uh, SRS, Sub Rosa, uh, popped out at me. Um, they put out really weird stuff, and I was like, this looks terrible. It sounds, like, I have no idea why it's named that, but it, like, reading the synopsis, it sounds like it's about, like... You read the synopsis! Whoops. Spoilers! Yeah, I know. Okay. So it sounds like it's it's about, like, like the mob. I don't understand. But, Something to I mean, do with Kitty Killers, it's got too. It's really weird. Like, there's some dude with, like, a knife. I, it doesn't make sense, so... Anybody we'll, seen it? We'll figure it out. We're gonna watch it. It's, uh, this is pretty weird, so that qualified. <laughs> Definitely think, qualified. And, you know, two or three bucks. I think it was three bucks. You know, hey, Kitty Killers. Hey. Hey. <laughs> All right, next, uh... God, what is this? <laughs> do you remember do buying you know this? A do you want to know a secret? I don't know. Joseph Lawrence and Chad Allen. Have no idea who they are. Uh, One dollar, you know, paid I, I don't know where we are. pennies for it. It's probably really bad, but looks very entertaining. This is what a gem we found. <laughs> Monster <laughs> mud. And I mean, yeah, just based on this, that's why we bought it. Sold. Yeah. Sold. <laughs> what needs more to be said? Yeah, it says. Show the cover art again. We're gonna need a bigger bowl. You'd buy it. He'd buy it. Who wouldn't? Yeah. So. I mean, the cashier was really jealous. I think so. She probably was like, you know what? I wish I would have saw this come in so I could snag it. <laughs> Monster Mutt. Anybody seen it? Looks pretty awesome. Uh, one dollar. These are all from the exchange, actually. Actually, every one of them. Every single one of these. Yep. Okay. Cool. Last thing you found was a uh, Goobers. Yeah. Moonbeam. Charles Moonbeam. Band. Charles Band. Full and, moon. Um, mischievous, magical, messy. Goobers. You know, anything from Moonbeam or, or, or Full Moon, I'm going to check out for sure. And I've, I've seen that one before. Um, it's really good. It's entertaining. It's got some cute little puppets, as, you know, Charles Band's good for. This one was produced and directed by him, wasn't it? I believe so. Uh, yes, Written. indeed. Produced and directed by Mr. Charles Band himself. Yeah. Um, uh, Moonbeam films I'd like to give an honorable mention to. Uh, the ones that I was introduced to at the video store, Prehistoria. Um, and remote, two of my favorites. Um, I only have them both on tape. Uh, but to see uh, a Moonbeam flick, this is actually my first Moonbeam DVD purchase. Pretty, Good one. pretty historic, you know. And I happen to just see the spine because in those disc replay shops, they have everything in like these glass cabinets, and that's like weird and like really new to me. And even in the exchange, they do also. Yeah. Did I say <laughs> disc replay again? Is that what I did? I really say it again? What's wrong with me? I don't understand. Where are you? Where am I? But yeah, my first Moonbeam Entertainment um, DVD purchase, and she says it's a good one, so I believe right, it. Lastly up, um, don't do too many Amazon purchases. Sometimes I do, um, but got something in the mail, and uh, on the wish list for so long, probably, gosh, probably over a year now. Um, I've mentioned before, and it's weird because we have, we grabbed that for me. Yeah, yeah. You got it? Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. That's our watch pile up there, by the way. There's some stuff. It's pretty hefty. There. So, I mentioned this on my show a couple times. I don't remember if I actually did a brief review of this or not. Um, Neo noir stuff, um, film noir, the stuff that takes place in like modern day. 
um, stuff that um, I try to seek out and stuff that I'm interested in. Um, but I've always been a fan of the film noir genre. If any of you guys have seen Frank and Lola, if you haven't, uh, of course, Michael Shannon's in it. I talk about him practically every episode. Um, man Crush? I don't know. I just love him. I do. Um, anyways, I've always been interested in film noir since I saw a film called Touch of Evil, um, one of my first years in film school. And um, so, yeah, Touch of Evil inspired me to start seeking out film noir. And um, let's go ahead and see what's in that bag. Why don't you go ahead and pull that out? Pre cut. Pull it out. It's yours. Nope. Okay. All right. I'll reach, reach my hand in there. My first unbagging on the Lewis Witcher show. Um, but that, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Oh my gosh. That's so cool. Anyways, it's a box set. Film Noir, The Dark Side of Cinema. And of course, that is put out by Kino Lorber. And so excited. Are you excited to watch all these Film Noir titles? I'm very excited. I'm Pretty not well versed in the way of Film Noir, but I'm about to be. Yeah, I don't know. I've never seen any of these. I've heard that these aren't the perfect examples of Film Noir, but Kino, I trust. Um, I trust what they put out, um, have several of their releases, um, and let's go ahead and go through them real quick. Uh, first one is Witness to Murder, that is this one up here. Um, second one being He Ran All the Way, uh, John Garfield's in that one, that's going to be fun. A lot of these are in the 50s I believe, yeah, 1954 for Witness to Murder, He Ran All the Way was 1951. Storm Fear though is one that I'm so glad that's on here because I remember seeing that one. Um, Gene Wallace stars in that one. That's the third one down. Um, a Bullet for Joey, uh, 1955. Big House USA, another one that I have seen. Um, God, I think, yeah, Charles Bronson is definitely in that one. So, bonus for you. You get to see your boy Charles pop boy. up in one of these films. Um, so happy to have this. Is anybody out there, has anybody seen any of that stuff? Um, just um, really, really, really excited to have this. Um, Christine is not familiar too much with film noir, so a good way to break her in. So thank you guys so much for watching the Lewis Witcher Show. Um, I appreciate everybody. Up to 73 subscribers now. And that's a big deal. It's monumental. Um, it is. When I hit 100, I'm going to do something extremely special, something I've never done on the show before. Um, so anybody in your family, your friends, or anybody that wants to subscribe, I'd appreciate it. Um, Stay tuned to the show, guys. Uh, much love. See you guys next time.